A long-awaited return to form. Finally, we can forget about the COVID-related stuff when it comes to South Park and continue with the show's winning formula. Genuinely, this season was a huge breath of fresh air for the show. And even though Randy's weed farm is still made to be a narrative focal point in some instances, something a lot of us, including myself, feel has been done to death by this point, it surprisingly does take a little bit more of a backseat in season 25, therefore allowing other plot threads to flourish without constantly relying on the marijuana jokes. And so in this video we shall be looking at South Park Season 25 on DVD discussing all six episodes that are included and the pros and cons of the DVDs currently and what I hope to see from them going forward. This is the UK Region 2 DVD release of Season 25 of South Park. The Region 1 copy is more or less the same. However, the Americans were very lucky to get a Blu-ray release of this season, which still here in the UK, no South Park Blu-ray releases, which is quite unfortunate. There's a look at the back cover, a brief synopsis of the 25th season, lacking special features still, which is a huge shame in my opinion. Rated a 15 here in the UK for strong language, drug misuse, sex references, sexual assault, and racism. And the total runtime on this one, you're looking approximately 129 minutes. Removing the slipcover, the artwork does remain the same beneath. Opening the case, we have just the single disc there with butters prominently featured, containing all six episodes of season 25, and there's a great shot of all the kids in the classroom wearing their pyjamas. So let's go through the episodes and discuss them in further detail. This takes us to the first episode of this new run, Pajama Day, and with such a long break from having, I guess, typical episodes of the show, this was an extremely well-written comeback, where Mr. Garrison is furious with the fourth grade students for not paying attention during his class, when he's not really teaching them anything, he's just openly discussing his love life. And when PC Principal catches wind of this, he instead bans the students from taking part in Pajama Day as punishment for just not listening to their teacher, obviously him getting the wrong end of the stick, and focusing on the children, they protest the ban, even going as far as comparing the unfair treatment to Nazi Germany. What is this, Nazi Germany? Hey, how many times have I told you kids not to bring up Nazi Germany when you don't get something you want? Which really caught me off guard. A lot of this episode is very dialogue heavy, delivering some hysterical one-liners, and for sure this was a very strong start to this new season. The Big Fix uses elements of Randy's weed farm for its storytelling, setting up a larger plot going forward, and Randy learns that his farm could suffer from its white-only ownership. Therefore, his new business strategy is to introduce a black person to the marketing, and so he manipulates Stan into asking Token and his family over for dinner, where Randy can once again manipulate this to his favour, However, the funniest takeaway from this episode was the usage of retroactive continuity, literally retconning Tolkien's name from Tolkien to Tolkien, as in the Lord of the Rings writer, and this really caught me off guard. I love how they try and address this within the continuity and lineage of the show as well. For example, Cartman misspelling Tolkien's name on his t-shirt in season 20, saying Tolkien's life matters. There are definitely more episodes showing Tolkien's original name as intended, but this new direction is just a brilliant middle finger to the fans, literally calling people racist by the end in an unprovoked manner. Why would anyone name a black kid Tolkien? You're a piece of shit! Originally, for those that weren't aware, the usage of the word Tolkien as a name was in reference to just literally adding a token black guy for the sake of racial diversity, and changing this detail so far into the show's history is a bold move, but overall a fantastic idea for the sake of illustrating comedic change. City People was a very enjoyable episode for its focus on Cartman and his continued selfish nature. When his mother gets a job in real estate to help pay the rent, Cartman does everything he possibly can to make this more difficult, including becoming a real estate agent himself. And whilst this feud is ongoing, the town is slowly being overtaken by so-called city people. People from the city who want to move away and embrace the country lifestyle. And their portrayal really cracked me up with some of the babbling kind of dialogue, repeating words such as bottled water, Wi-Fi, Tesla, etc. Some excellent satire and overall a very well-written episode showing the collapse of the housing market. Back to the Cold War got several immature laughs out of me with its focus on Mr. Mackey, making this one of the more favourable episodes for me personally. 
I honestly find him to be such a fascinating character beyond just being the school counsellor, especially in episodes such as in Sheepshun and The Scoots. This time, we see him overly obsessed with the idea that Vladimir Putin is going to nuke the school, where he prepares the students to face this catastrophe, and he's described as oddly nostalgic about the impending threat, looking back favourably on the Cold War. This is then paired with a dressage competition, with Butters trying to beat a Russian kid at pony riding, where these stories eventually do cross over, and there are some fun ideas, especially the parody ending, where Mackie replicates the speech from the end of Rocky IV, and I saw that coming a mile away, and thankfully it did not disappoint. Next up we have Help My Teenager Hates Me, and this got a lot of laughs out of me also. Kyle and the other boys get into the airsoft shooting game, basically tag with realistic looking guns that shoot BB projectiles, and when playing they end up in a split group sharing the game with a bunch of teenagers who are all given the generic teen stereotypes. And made worse for the boys, they are basically forced into babysitting their teenagers, guilted into doing this, just for being associated with them during the airsoft games. And I love the mixed kind of visual styles during the shootout scenes, some fantastic updates to the character models when wearing the airsoft gear, particularly Jimbo, who becomes a stand-in for Cartman's father when the other boys get their dads involved. For sure, one of the best episodes of this season. Concluding the season, we have the Credigree Weed at St. Patrick's Day special, continuing the Tegrity Farm story spread throughout this season, where we have now a rivalry between Tegrity Farms and Token's father, Stephen, opening a farm of his own known as Credigree Weed. And overall, I felt this was a fairly mediocre season finale. It had some fun moments. I think the view of cultural appropriation in line with Tolkien's father celebrating St. Patrick's Day was humorous enough, but personally, I was more invested in Butters, once again being brutally punished for doing something seemingly innocent, taken completely out of context, where he pinches a girl at school for not wearing green on St. Patrick's Day, and he ends up being arrested for sexual harassment. And this entire sequence really got me. I found it very humorous, where Butters is such an innocent character, forced into an unfortunate situation. And I really liked the ending, where St. Patrick is made into a proper character, showing a true depiction of the expectations behind how St. Paddy's Day is meant to be celebrated. The irony being, people have since moved on and changed beyond these ideas in the more contemporary times. And that about covers the episodes included, a very short run at that. Arguably, the Streaming Wars Parts 1 and 2 really should have been included, I imagine similar to how Season 24 was released, that those will eventually get their own DVD and Blu-ray set later down the line, but for the most part, this was a very entertaining season, showing how the series really can jump back to its roots. Even if the Tegrity Farm stuff is still present, thankfully, it wasn't a huge focus, and a lot of the more recent South Park episodes have felt very experimental, and I think that's definitely the best that Troy Parker and Matt Stone can do. Although we have less content, stepping down from 10 episodes to only 6 now per season, less is definitely more where a lot of the more recent stories have felt very memorable on reflection. The biggest criticism of the past few DVD releases, which I have mentioned a couple of times now, is that we really need to get the commentaries back. I love listening to the commentary minis. It's honestly one of the biggest draws for me personally to grab the DVDs beyond obviously having the episodes. And just having some form of bonus feature really does feel as though you're getting something extra for the sake of grabbing the DVDs. I was really hoping the 25th anniversary concert that was filmed, obviously celebrating 25 years of South Park, may have been included. Sadly, nothing of the sort, which is disappointing, but as ever, I will continue supporting these DVD releases. I love the artwork on these, and it's always good to have the episodes in the collection. That's going to do it for this review. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave me a like down below. Let me know in the comments what your favourite episode was from the 25th season, and for more content, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, DVD Review Studios. Are you threatening me?